Good evening. Welcome to our Ask and Learn Geothermal Educational Series. This webinar is on geothermal, a league of its own. How geothermal compares to other types of heating and cooling systems. And this is brought to you by Hydron Module Geothermal Systems. For a brief introduction, just allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tim Wright with Entertech Global. And with me this evening as the presenter is Jeremy Lang, also with Entertech Global. Hydron module systems are built by Entertech Global. We have been in the geothermal industry for approximately 20 years. All of our models are manufactured in Mitchell, South Dakota. Our corporate office is located in Greenville, Illinois, and our products are sold throughout the United States and Canada. We manufacture residential and commercial products that are very focused toward customers, and obviously the main product focus is always around quality. So as we get started with this brief webinar this evening, here's how to make the most out of this webinar opportunity. First of all, feel free to take notes. Second, feel free to ask any question. And as you see with asking questions, you will have a small little box located over on the right hand side of your screen that is called out as questions. Feel free to type your question into that box and then hit the send or submit and then that will show up on our screen. And at the end of our webinar time, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Here's the cool part. You get to research and review anything about Entertech, Hydron Module, and we're here to answer your questions. Gia, I'm gonna turn this over to Jeremy now, and uh, it's all yours, my friend. Thank you, Tim. So good evening, I'm Jeremy Lang with Entertech Global, and just wanted to talk with you about geothermal. A lot of people think geothermal is new technology. I'm here to let you know, geothermal is as old as dirt. <clears throat> Here's a copy of Life Magazine. October 25th in 1948, Life Magazine featured an article. In this article, they talked about the fireless furnace. The fireless furnace pumps heat from the earth to the house. We're going to go ahead and take a look at this. If you look at the system components, you'll notice that all of the components in this image are the same components that we use today. However, we have more reliable components and more modern technology. Let's take a look at a geothermal system. We have a geothermal unit, we have pumps, and we have a ground loop heat exchanger. Some of the different ground loop options include pond loops, horizontal loops, and vertical loops. Many different options for each different individual application. Now, Jeremy, help me understand. There was no outdoor unit that I saw in any of those pictures. That's right. And one of the, one of the most friendly benefits for most consumers is that the geothermal system doesn't have an ugly outdoor unit, meter, or propane tank. All of our system is in the house and our ground loops are buried in the earth so that we can harvest energy from the earth and also deposit in, uh, in the summertime. So let's take a look at how this operates. Geothermal systems operate much like a giant refrigerator. When you put a warm crock pot into the refrigerator, the refrigerator turns on, absorbs the heat from the air and from the crock pot, takes it to the compressor, the compressor raises the temperature and deposits the heat into your home. A geothermal system is operating in much the same manner. What we have is in the air conditioning mode, the fan brings warm air from the return air in the house, pulls it across the cool air coil, which absorbs the heat and discharges cool air through the registers to keep you comfortable when the weather's warm. We also have a compressor and we have two liquid cooled heat exchangers. One of those heat exchangers takes the heat from your home and deposits it into the preheat tank 
so that you could shower and do dishes with it. Then we also have the ground loop. The remainder of the heat is deposited in the ground loop heat exchanger using liquid moving through the pumps. So Jeremy, again, just to briefly help me understand and everyone on the call understand, you're meaning while I am getting air conditioning for my home, this is also preheating my hot water. Absolutely, Tim, that's right. So your central air conditioner, if you have one at home, would typically absorb the heat from your home and throw it outside and get rid of it. Whereas a geothermal system will recycle that heat energy into the storage tank so that you can use it for potable hot water. It's pretty neat. In the heating mode, the system reverses and actually the fan will absorb cool air from the house, pull it across a warm air coil and blow warm air through the registers, keeping you comfortable year round. Let's take a look at the costs. In order to make a fair comparison of geothermal versus natural gas or propane, what we have to take a look at is the cost per million BTUs. So basically we're gonna look at the, the work that this machine does. If we look at a geothermal system, the average geothermal system is about a four ton system for a 2000 square foot home. That's the example that we've got highlighted here with the green arrows. On the top of the box, if you're purchasing electricity at five cents a kilowatt, that system would deliver one million BTUs and it would only cost $3.76. If your electricity prices double that, you're going to still be only at $7.51 per million BTUs. Well, let's take a look at natural gas and propane. With the best natural gas or propane furnace on the market today, they're operating somewhere close to 98%. That's 98% efficient. So when you feed it a dollar, you lose a few cents out the chimney. So this machine is going to give you $10, or excuse me, 1 million BTUs for $10.20 on natural gas. And on propane, if it's a dollar a gallon, then you're going to be paying $11.14 per million BTUs of, of heat. So really, when you take a look at it with regards to the cost per million BTU, so is this kind of the common denominator, Jeremy? Is this what levels the playing field? Absolutely, Tim. It, there's a lot of different rating scales that these appliances are rated on, and it's very complex for most consumers to uh, really understand what's really happening there. So what we like to do is just break it down to the work that's done. Let's deliver 1 million BTUs, or picture 1 million candles lit. For that much energy, here are the prices that you'd have to pay. So let's take a look at a realistic propane cost. At, let's say, $2 a gallon, you'd have to pay $22.28 for 1 million BTUs, when the geothermal system could get it done for $3.76. That's a significant savings. It's different for each individual, so it's important to have a contractor come out to the house, take a look at your individual situation, and make some recommendations. So we've talked about a lot. What does all that mean? You'd have to buy LP or propane for just one quarter to come close to the cost of geothermal. You just can't get that kind of deal anymore. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening on this Ask and Learn Geothermal Educational Series webinar. Please, again, feel free as we started out the webinar to ask questions, again, now using your sidebar to post your question and Jeremy or I would be more than happy to answer your question this evening. Also, feel free if you have no questions right now or you just want to ponder what Jeremy has laid out for you this evening, please feel free to go to www.hydronmodule.com to use our savings calculator or to find a dealer in an area near you. As far as talking one-on-one -on -one with any of our staff, for any upcoming project you have, whether it's a new structure, whether it's an existing home, we'd love the opportunity to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. Feel free to reach out to us at 618-664-9010, or if you're still on your computer, just type in asklearn at entertechgeo.com, and we'd love to help you in any way we could. Thank you again for taking the time to, to be on this webinar with us. Again, if you'd like to review it, 
please go to www.youtube.com backslash Entertech MFG for manufacturing. Again, join us, please, for future upcoming webinars to learn even more about geothermal and specific applications. You can see on the screen, we will also be featuring another webinar that really is going to focus on how does it work and does it work where I live. And that is going to be on Tuesday, December the 8th at 8.30 Central Time in the evening. Thank you, Tim. We've we've got a couple of questions that have come in here, <clears throat> and um, I'd like to just have you read the first question for us, Tim. No problem, Jeremy. Can a geothermal system provide radiant heat? Wow, that's a great question. Absolutely. You know, a geothermal system is the most efficient way to heat and cool any structure, and a geothermal system is one of the most flexible heating and cooling systems out there we can absolutely provide all of your comfort through radiant and floor system. Most of the people out there are choosing to do a forced air geothermal system unless they're building a new home. If you're building a new home, it's very, very wise to install tubing in the floor with insulation underneath of it so that we can provide your heat from the, from the floor up. It's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more efficient because you don't have the air moving and the, and the leakage through your duct system if it's in an unconditioned space. So that's, that's a great question. We've got another question that came in here, and I'll go ahead and take this one here. How does a geothermal system work with renewables like solar and wind, or how does a geothermal system compare? That's a great question. Geothermal systems are renewable energy. The energy that we absorb from the earth is actually from the sun. So if we take a look at a geothermal system, we're, re we're actually harvesting 75% of the energy that you need from the yard. So we have 75% of your energy requirement on site. If you're interested in purchasing a solar or a wind system, that means that we can reduce the requirements that your system would have to provide for your home because we're reducing the requirements or the need for your home's energy. Harvesting that energy from the backyard is just smart. Jeremy, another question that, that gets posed uh, quite often is why else would people want to go geothermal? You've talked and, and identified the energy savings, the fact that there's no outdoor equipment, but help us understand a few other advantages of geothermal. You know, geothermal systems are a lot more comfortable. Um, in, in my home, I, I had a, an old fossil fuel system, replaced it with a geothermal system. And I noticed that from level to level, my home is more comfortable. The basement isn't as cold as it was before. Uh, I, I have more even temperatures from one end to the other of my house. So it's, it's just a lot more even, uh, what I like to call a soft heat. So Jeremy, really, when we're talking about comfort, it's really the absence of discomfort. Absolutely, Tim. Yeah, that's that's one thing that's pretty popular. As we as we go out and, and encounter homeowners, uh, hot and cold spots throughout their house are, are just common all over the place. Whether it be upstairs, downstairs, or in the in the bedroom farthest from their comfort system, a, a geothermal system has a has a variable speed fan which. Um, evenly distributes the house or excuse me evenly distributes the air through the house so that you can stay comfortable year round and the system will clean the air more effectively than any other system out there because we're moving more air than most conventional systems so we have no outdoor equipment we're more comfortable we're more efficient we have no carbon dioxide emissions because we run on electricity we do not run on fossil fuel and we do not waste any energy out of a chimney or a flue like another gas heating appliance. So really, can we say tonight that we're not burning a fossil fuel on site? That's right, Tim. We're leveraging electrical input energy. The geothermal system is an investment. If you're going to live in your home for any length of time, it's wise for you to invest in a geothermal system. That system is going to be operating in your home, whether you're there or whether you're not. 24-7, your house is going to be maintaining temperature. So a lot of times people look at that as, uh, I'd say they take it for granted. But a geothermal system 
allows people to appreciate the comfort in their home because they've never realized how uncomfortable their home was. Unbelievable. So one other question for you, and I don't mean to get too technical, but I've often heard of this term COP, coefficient of performance. Absolutely. Can you just hit me with that? Yeah. So $1 in to dollars out. That's what COP is. So let's take a look at a a system that has possibly a COP of uh, three or a COP of four or five. What that means is that that system is four or 500% efficient. When you feed it a dollar, you're going to get on the worst day, $3 worth of heat out of that machine because we're harvesting all that energy from the yard. On mild days, we're going to be able to get efficiencies up to four or 500% efficient, just like your car. We're not working it hard because the weather's mild. So uh, the COP essentially is um, is your efficiency. And a fossil fuel system has an, a COP of less than one. So you're spending spending money on energy there that you're just losing. Unbelievable. So as we wrap up the webinar and take another look at uh, our future webinars, we love the opportunity to, to get with our customers. So again, we have asked and certainly putting up the offer that we'd love the opportunity to speak with you. Again, 618-664-9010 or asklearn at entertechgeo.com. Thank you for taking the, the time this evening to join us on this webinar, and we very much value and appreciate your time with us this evening. Thank you. Have a great night.